daylight in Japan for about six hours now, enough time for its residents to really see the devastation firsthand. But while one immediate fear may be gone, a new one has taken its place that may be an even greater threat. A nuclear reactor has become unstable, emitting a thousand times the normal amount of radiation inside the plant. It is a harrowing notion, nuclear meltdown. That's the fear at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant in the town of Okuma, 160 miles away from Tokyo. All the external signs indicate that we are very close to a nuclear catastrophe. To keep the super hot uranium at the core of the reactor under control, pumps circulate water as a coolant. The quake and tsunami acted as a one-two punch, knocking out power to the primary and backup pumps. They're now running on battery power. If those batteries wear out, which they will uh, but sometime tonight, and there is no new power supply, then that water will turn into steam. That steam will bust through the containment vessel and, vessel, and you will have a nuclear reactor meltdown. The company operating the plant says it's lost ability to control pressure at three of its on-site reactors. What are we worried about here? The bad news is any secondary earthquake, any broken pipe could tip it over and you have this hot core of 100 tons of uranium dioxide. All of a sudden, the cooling water begins to drop below the top. Within 30 minutes, you will have a core meltdown. You're talking China Syndrome. You're talking Chernobyl. You're talking Three Mile Island. Open 14 and 15. The China Syndrome, a movie from 1979 that captured the fallout of a nuclear meltdown. a serious condition. You get everybody into safety areas and make sure that they stay there. Please stand by with your doors and windows. That same year, the U.S. suffered a real-life nuclear scare, Three Mile Island. A one-two punch was again to blame, a bad valve and a slow response. The result? A severe core meltdown. Fortunately, the reactor's walls prevented radiation from escaping. No significant amount of radioactivity was released from the Three Mile Island plant. The impact on uh, the local population was essentially zero. In Japan, the area around the Fukushima plant has been evacuated, and the Japanese Prime Minister is on his way to tour the site, urging calm and saying the situation is still under evaluation. But some nuclear experts say the situation has the potential to become a full-blown Chernobyl-style scenario, where a meltdown could lead to radiation being spread far and wide. How far away can the effect go? Within a few hours, we're talking about most of that area in Sendai being bathed in a blanket of radioactive uranium dioxide. We think it could easily go 50 miles, hopefully into the ocean, but it could also blow it south into Tokyo. While the nuclear plant is the most immediate concern, there are a host of other ongoing nightmares. Act 2 is what destroyed San Francisco, not the earthquake. It was the fires, because all the water mains broke open. Fire main would come to a site and there's no water pressure. So there are 80 fires now breaking out of Japan, many of them out of control. Scenes like this, a grim reminder that the human toll under the rubble may be great. Missing trains and vessels, huge whirlpools and waves all still threaten. And yet, for all this devastation, this could have been worse. Millions of people were involved in the drill. Japan is perhaps the most advanced country when it comes to earthquake preparation. Japan actually has a yearly nationwide earthquake drill, as well as a cellular alert system. Engineers have used massive earthquake simulators called shake tables to study the effects of a quake on full-size structures. This has led to designs for roadways and buildings that are earthquake resistant. The building can sway this way or this way and not fall over. We realize that when we make things solid, they're brittle. And you have to make things flexible so that they sway a little bit. Not too much, but sway enough to absorb the shock. But despite the advances in technology, even the Japanese have not invested the money or resources to prepare for the magnitude of today's quake. This is the monster earthquake, the earthquake that we never thought would happen. This is called de beyond design basis, one in a century. Well, hey, wake up. Once in a century accidents do happen. Mm. And we're
joined now by Dr. Michio Kaku, professor of physics at the City University of New York and an ABC News consultant. You've been educating us all day, doctor. Thank you for staying with us. Uh, let's start with what they were able to avoid, those swaying buildings. Amazing to behold, how do they do that? Well, the good news is the Japanese engineers have perfected buildings that do sway, but they have a weight on top that moves in the opposite direction. So if the building leans this way, the weight on top moves in the other direction, and vice versa. Here's how it works. And it also works in the other direction. So in any two-dimensional direction, the counterweight balances the sway of the other building, and the building does not fall. Ingenious. And of course, those buildings were swaying by all reports for half an hour after the quake stopped. We know this was an incredibly powerful quake. Chris was saying at the top of the show, it shifted the axis of the Earth. It had 1,000 times the energy of the Haiti quake, lasting for five minutes. I mean, the Northridge quake lasted for 20 seconds in Southern California. That's right. And my grandfather was in the San Francisco earthquake of 1906, flattened the whole city. This earthquake had 10 times the energy of the San Francisco earthquake. And it's a technically an aftershock, right? Technically, it's an aftershock, right? A few days before, there was a 7.1 or so earthquake. This was, in some sense, an aftershock of the previous one. Now, let's deal with the urgency here. This nuclear reactor, it's still unstable at this time. What could happen? What needs to happen? It's a race against time. The good news is that they now have 14 backup generators that have been placed on site. That's the good news. The bad news is that it takes time. We have to then test it to make sure it works. And meanwhile, secondary aftershocks could open up pipes, create breaks, and lose the water inside the containment structure. That is the nightmare scenario that has haunted every physicist for a generation. You lose the water, the core heats up, Uranium dioxide begins to splinter, release radiation, and you're talking Chernobyl. Chernobyl. It's still going on right now, so we have to watch it. All right, Dr. Michio Kaku, thank you, thank you so much for being with us tonight. And when we come back, surviving the tsunami, is it even possible? Watching today's video, you would think no one could, but people did survive the tsunami in Thailand. Model Petra Nemkova and TV host Nate Berkus will hear from them firsthand what it's like to be under a wall of water.